in the earlier presentation that is uh, sludge treatment process part 1 we have just covered the thickening sludge thickening or concentration and also we have uh, finished the sludge digestion process so in this presentation we will just cover the remaining four treatment process of sludge so first the third one it is the sludge conditioning so sludge conditioning means what we are doing is that we are treating this sludge solids with chemicals so that we can easily do this dewatering process we can easily remove the water from the sludge because sludge normally it contains moisture so in, if you are dewatering the sludge if you are removing that water from the sludge we can reduce the volume of the sludge and we can easily dispose it of so sludge conditioning is a sludge treatment process where we are treating the sludge salts with chemicals that is we are preparing the sludge for dewatering process so uh, if you are doing the sludge conditioning, we can improve the dewatering characteristics of the sludge. So, the sludge conditioning, it also improves the drainability of the digested sludge. If the sludge digestion is taking place uh, in a better way, then we can easily drain the digested sludge from the digestion tanks. If the sludge digestion, if it is taking place very poorly, then in such cases, to drain that sludge will be uh, difficult. So, it is always better to do this conditioning prior to this dewatering method so that we can easily do this dewatering method also. So, conditioning can be achieved by different methods such as nutrition, uh, then chemical conditioning, heat treatment, freezing, etc. And this chemical conditioning of sludge with or without elutration that is we can carry this chemical conditioning of sludge along with the elutration method or without elutration method so uh, when the dewatering of sludge if it is uh, accomplished by if the dewatering of sludge if you are doing by vacuum filtration in such cases we can do this chemical conditioning of sludge along with elutration or without elutration also we can carry it out so what is mean by this elutration so elutration is nothing but just for you to understand i have just including this uh, small portion here so just for you to understand only so elutration means just nothing but there's a process of washing out the sludge that is we can wash the sludge to remove the organic and fatty acids so what happens is that normally during the sludge digestion process volatile acids alcohols organic acids etc develops within the sludge digestion tanks so if these acids or alcohol or if this organic acids if you are not removing it will interfere with the coagulation process during dewatering because during the dewatering uh, process we are adding some chemicals as a coagulant so what happens is that the solid parts will be settled at the bottom of the tank and we can easily remove that water from the sludge so we have to remove this volatile acids alcohols and organic acids so that it will not interfere with the coagulation process especially during the dewatering de method when it is carried out so if elutration is done before dewatering or concentration then it will reduce the quantity of the coagulants so always it is better to do this elutration we can wash the sludge with water so that we can remove this organic and fatty acids so that we can reduce the quantity of coagulants so elutration is always uh, better to do before dewater uh, dewatering method or before the sludge concentration so sludge elutration is carried out in either in single tank or we can carry it out in multiple tank by washing the sludge with water the fourth sludge digestion uh, process it is the sludge dewatering so the purpose of dewatering it is to reduce the volume of the sludge and to increase the solid concentration that is the most purpose why we are why we are doing this sludge dewatering we are removing the water content because the sludge normally it contains 95 to 98 percentage moisture we have to remove that moisture that water content from the sludge so that we can reduce the volume of the sludge we can easily dispose it to the uh, environment after treating it we can increase the solid concentration so most of the digested primary or mixer sludge can be compacted to a water content of about 90 percent within the digester itself by gravity so we can compact that sludge by removing the water content from the sludge so further dewatering it is accomplished by either by air drying on sand drying beds or by mechanical means such as using vacuum filtration or by the centrifugation process or by using pressure filtration we can do this dewatering so sludge dewatering it is nothing but to remove the water content uh, from the sludge so normally the dewatering of this concentrated sludge is done by continuous centrifugal uh, process 
so just for you to understand i am just uh, giving a brief idea about the centrifugal process so in this process what we are doing is that the outer casing of a centrifuge in the forex centrifuge there will be an outer casing will be the which contains uh, some a revolving solid bound will be the and in which there will be a screw conveyor will be the which rotates at a very slow speed so the sludge enters into this Uh, solid bowl through the hub of the conveyor and when the cylinder revolves what happens is that the centrifugal force causes the solids to uh, deposit on the walls of the bowl from where it can be removed that is a process that is actually going on just for you to understand only i am just uh, telling this so mainly the dewatering means to reduce the volume of sludge and to increase the solid concentration so if we are reducing the volume of the sludge we can after treatment we can easily dispose it to the Uh, surroundings so after this uh, reducing this volume the solid will be just will be passing on to the sun uh, sand drying bed or by vacuum filtration we will be just taking out this water and we will be drying it on uh, the sand drying bed so after drying it on the sand drying bed we can use it for irrigation purpose or if you want to dispose it we can dispose it safely so that is the method sludge dewatering the last process that is the incineration so incineration is nothing but incinerators we can use to burn the sludge so sludge combustion can be done using incineration where we are using incinerators so it involves the combustion of sludge in a reactor that is incinerator under high temperature along with the auxiliary fuels if needed we can use some auxiliary fuels but under high temperature the sludge combustion takes place within the Uh, incinerator and the purpose of uh, this incineration it is to destroy the organic material the residue ash being generally uh, that is obtained from this incinerator we can use as this uh, landfill also so after this incinerator that ash we can safely dispose into the uh, surroundings also without any threat to the environment so during this process all the gases released from this sludge they are burnt off and all the organisms are also destroyed uh, inside this incinerator so the dewatered or digested sludge it is subject to temperature of between 650 degrees celsius to 750 degrees celsius temperature is very high so in such a temperature the organisms will die off then all the gases that is released from this sludge will be burnt off and uh, the remaining left will be some ash or residue which we can safely dispose to the surroundings so cyclone uh, hearth furnace or multiple hearth furnace and this uh, flash type furnace etc can be used to heat this uh, sludge under the temperature control and some dry using drying mechanism we can work this uh, incinerator and we can just take out the ash and dispose to the surroundings the advantages of incineration it ensures the complete destruction of pathogenic bacteria there is no odor the cost can be recovered that is by selling the steam power and the clinkers from the incinerators then disposal site can be conveniently located within the city also because the ash that is uh, getting as a waste or residue from this uh, incinerator we can safely dispose it of because it is uh, no more pathogenic bacteria no more uh, pathogenic organisms are uh, present inside that the uh, residue that is left from the incinerator then disadvantage of incineration means it is a costly method incinerators are costly so it's a costly method uh, then smoke odor and ash nuisance may result due to the improper and incompetent operation of the plant so the supervisor should be of uh, having that skill to work with this incinerator sometimes a smoke and odor can emit from this incinerator and also ash nuisance also will be there if you are not properly operating that incinerator especially in that incinerator if there are substance which is having high calorific value so these are the disadvantages of this incineration so next we move on to this another topic that is sludge lagooning so sludge lagoons it is mainly used for storage for sludge digestion for dewatering and for final disposal of dried sludge we can use this sludge lagoons so this lagoon means is nothing but it is a shallow earth basin into which we can just pour the untreated uh, sludge or digested sludge it is deposited in this shallow earthen basin that is the lagoon so this untreated sludge lagoons so it stabilizes the organic solid so aerobic decomposition the top will be aerobic decomposition the bottom of the lagoon will be anaerobic decomposition so what happens is that that untreated sludge slowly slowly the organic solids present in that sludge will be get stabilized and what will be the net result is that which may give rise to objectionable odors will be coming from that uh, lagoons due to the anaerobic digestion and hence the lagoons should always be located away from the towns or cities 
in the earlier presentation that is uh, sludge treatment process part 1 we have just covered the thickening sludge thickening or concentration and also we have uh, finished the sludge digestion process so in this presentation we will just cover the remaining four treatment process of sludge So the area of the sludge lagoon should always be twice that of this sand drying bed. So in this sludge lagoon, so after doing this dewatering of the sludge, the sludge will be poured onto the sand drying bed. So the area of this lagoon should always be twice that of this sand drying bed. And the agricultural tile drains of about 10 cm diameter, they are placed at 3 meter centers at the bottom of the lagoon. And uh, normally a 15 centimeter thick layer of ashes or a clinker is placed over it uh, this uh, over this drain that is to facilitate the drain of water from the wet sludge so the water will be draining from the wet sludge so in order to uh, prevent that we can provide a 15 centimeter thick layer of ashes or clinker is placed about this uh, uh, tile drain so normally in agriculture the tile drains uh, means it's a drainage system only that we provide that to remove the excess water from soil below its surface that is why we are using this agricultural tile drains so lagoons normally they are very uh, less expensive to build and operate but they can be used particularly for the digested sluts in area where large open land is suitably located if it is available large area of land if it is available then in such cases we can provide this lagoon so normally these lagoons are provided in a remote areas which is away from towns or cities so use of lagoons is not generally desirable as they present an ugly sight and cause odor and mosquito breeding